All right, welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. If you've been watching, you've seen, oh, Kaz is here. <laughs> um, uh, and so yeah, we're gonna do this engine rebuild and uh, the reason we've got Kaz here is because I don't have a really good success rate of engine rebuilds. I've built about three two strokes and all of them seized. And by built, I mean I took the head off, took the barrel off, put a new piston on and sometimes like snap the rings at the point of installation. I didn't even finish the build sometimes. <laughs> um, Kaz has rebuilt one of these engines. Yep, on the Grom. Um, you've split the cases entirely, haven't you? Had the yep. crank apart and everything. Yep, full rebuild. Yep. yep. Cool. Sweet. So um, this one here, we've got the 143 kit. If you've been watching already, you've seen uh, where I explained all these engine parts. And then there's the next video where you look under the plastics of the Honda Wave, which is pretty interesting. And then the other video where I take this engine out, which was a bit of a mission, but um, not entirely impossible because it's here. We do have to recap an issue with the electric start. And uh, that's about it. We're going to kick into it. Um, we'll have a look for signs of wear um, across its use, like and when we take things apart. Yep. Um, we're going to be taking basically here off and replacing it. Um, everything in the bottom end is going to stay stock. Um, we do have a new clutch. We'll see what the, this one's like. Yep, we'll see what that's like. We'll see how many cases this done? 13,000. 13,000 unopened, untouched. So yeah. we'll have a look at a few parts and see what's been going on. Sweet. So it'll be a bit awkward to work on because we're trying to make it look good for you guys. Um, question. So you've got like your O2 sensor. Mm -hmm. What's this on this side here? It's oil temp. Oil temp. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Because I realized after I finished my video of the underneath the plastics that I didn't point at that plug. But we don't like to talk about those kind of things out loud. There's some rubber hammers over there as well. I'm sure we could uh, manipulate it. Manipulate it. Dun, 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 dun. Time to see what the inside looks like. Oh yeah, the um, cam gear looks fine. Oh, oh. lucky. <laughs> it was already loose. <laughs> <laughs> and this one? Uh, no, don't worry about that. Cool, get rid of that O-ring. That is quite good, because lots of people over tighten these and then you can get them out. Yeah. Oh, and um, Kevin, the Grom that you own now, yep. when we originally built that engine when he came over from Bali and had his Bali rebuild, yep. um, those are both stripped. Stripped, yep. and had, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did have to buy new ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had good fun getting them out, actually. It's funny, because I'm telling you like you don't know, and then I remember <laughs> that you, you rebuilt that engine. Oh, ho, ho. Just like that. See, this is the part where I'm already confused about what bolts go where that we've taken off and I start panicking. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. Two strokes easy because there's nothing there. And I say it's easy because when you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing wrong. And so everything just seems easy. Like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> and then you start it and it goes crunch. Um, another thing we need to do is release the tensioner. Oh, okay. Yep. So underneath these engines, you've got your oil drain here, which is 17 mil, and then your cam chain tensioner here. Yep. Um, and I've got a whole new setup for it. Oh, does that release the pressure? Yep, this is a little bleed screw. Oh. So when you put these back together, um, just FYI for anyone else doing this, don't use this as a tutorial, but yeah. what you do is fill up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling over because I'm trying to make the camera look better. You fill up this um, hole with oil, yeah, and that um, primes up the cam chain. The Otherwise, it takes a while to get wet. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, that looks um, that looks quite dirty. That oil. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Jesus. Now, why would the oil in here be so disgusting and dirty when I do regular oil changes? Like, I'm not saying that. It should be okay. I'm obviously just doing something wrong. That oil pretty much sits in under the cam chain tensioner piston, and when you do an oil change, that doesn't get flushed. So yeah, unless you drain this and fill it with fresh oil, that part doesn't recirculate oil. Interesting, isn't it? So like people like me who just think, oh, change your oil and you'll be all good. Um, you can do yourself a mischief later on without realizing. I don't think it's super bad, but. If you want to be real particular, um, yeah, these engines do are known for basically destroying the 
the um, rollers on the cam sprocket and it's probably due to stuff like that. Yeah. What happened with um, the ME6125 of um, engine from Kevin in the end? Because remember how it munched through like three sets of cam chain rollers or something? Was the sprocket on the cam yeah, off? Yeah, they had taken the um, sprocket off the camshaft, yeah. uh, off the crankshaft, yeah. and then when they pressed it back on, they didn't press it on all the way and it was in the wrong position. So The cam chain was almost kind of like... The, the cam chain was... Yeah. basically not running true and it was just mincing the wheels off the um yeah as well as the whole timing for the engine was out because it wasn't put back on in the right spot i knew that when i got it into my hands that it needed basically a new rebuild yeah like it ran but it sounded like nails a, yeah a whole <laughs> bunch of nails and stuff that shouldn't be in there cool one of those which i think we've actually got a new one of these to put on with the new camshaft and here's one of the mid rollers for the cam chain. And it's quite worn. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but that's actually really worn. If we hold it way closer up there. So you see how that's kind of flat in the middle? They usually have kind of a groove, do they? Or is it, no, it's no, got the flat, chain running in it. It's, it's tapered off to one side, so it's worn down basically yeah. through here. I think Ed March, when he's going through Malaysia to Thailand, and he's in Thailand at one point, and he takes his cam gear out um and it's uh like a saw blade all right yeah <laughs> it's just kind of like all worn one way it's quite crazy wow look at that look at that compared yep that's a good, good comparison <laughs> holy crap i will open that and show you here is your worn cam gear runner and here is your new one it's kind of hard to focus on them, but yeah, as you can see, there's a giant ridge there, and this thing's just been worn down to the nub. Same thing, same part number, interesting. That's wild, that's so crazy. So although Honda does build super, super reliable engines, mm. these are basically things you have to keep in mind. Uh, they are serviceable items. Yeah, that are uh, designed to be replaced every now and then. And and unfortunately, I find that like even in a lot of proper motorcycle shops, this kind of stuff is almost seen as too hard. It's overlooked. Um, yeah, not hard. It's definitely not hard to do. That's the wrong word. It's just uh, if I can slap an oil, some oil in there, change the filter, or wash out the screen if it's got one, and yeah. that's it. Um, it's like even if you take your bike to get like a pre-purchase checkup. Yeah. No one's going to look for that kind of stuff. You can't see what the internal engine is like. No, exactly. Um, I'm going to need you. Yep. Yep, yeah, sweet. When I was in um, Motor Mart in Wellington, they used to be the um, service agent for all the Honda Posty bikes. Yep. And they had one old boy there in his like, late 50s, early 60s. And um, all he did was basically work on those bikes just all day, every day. And he'd completely strip them down and rebuild them in like i think it was like an hour and 15. yep yeah just well refresh i imagine it's top and uh, top end only but he's just yeah slamming them out putting them back together he was the only guy they had that would do them but they recently got rid of honda unfortunately unfortunately honda are a notoriously difficult brand to deal with in uh new zealand and not because of honda new zealand's fault necessarily either it's just a situation where we have no people and motorbikes cost money yep. and eventually you've got to draw the line somewhere yep. and the way they just decide to do it unfortunately leaves a bit of deal uh, a few dealers in the lurch so yeah our bikes are considerably more expensive than somewhere in the likes of the us yeah yeah, yeah. and like people i mean i get frustrated when people make uh the comparison for like a thai made built a thai built bike in thailand being cheap like of course it is like of course it's cheaper and then people will be like oh a CT125 is 4,000 uh, New Zealand dollars in Thailand, but it costs 8,000 here. It's like, yeah, well, like it doesn't surprise me. But when your prices are very different to other Western countries, that's when it's frustrating because you know the same amount of effort's gone into getting it there. And the thing is like every brand, uh, new model that comes into the country and is registered has to kind of be checked. Yep. And they pay a fee to get that into the New Zealand system. Yep. So if they only bring 10 bikes in, that fee split over 10 bikes. And so those bikes instantly are a few hundred dollars more each. Yep. And then you've got taxes and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, head's going to come off. Oh, no, you hadn't. It's going to fall off. Uh, surprise!
Spinya. Don't know. I've been singing the Lion King song so much lately. I've never actually watched the Lion King. Oh yeah. It's a bit of carbon in there. Yeah. Show that camera. So if you just hold it in there really steadily and just don't move it around for a bit. Yeah. That's the one. That's what the uh, head looks like. And I'll show you on this camera in case it looks better. A little bit of carbon. Not terrible. Not too bad. Any um, thing that you can see in there that is interesting to you or not? No, it actually all looks pretty good. Cool. There's no burnout marks. There is a bit of build up around the, the valves, but they still look like they're seating pretty good. Yeah, they're bigger. It's definitely bigger. Yeah, that's considerably large. <laughs> so there's your difference. And for you out there in the in the uh, front seats, large valves, small valves, new, old. Okay, uh, piston. Give me a review. I guess we need to get the barrel off, don't we? Off okay. There's an old chap. I'll, I'll put his username, YouTube name, in here. Uh, he lives in Chiang Mai in Thailand, and he got a CT125 and went and got like a 143 kit installed by one of the local shops there, and it all went well and didn't blow up or do anything silly. But he. Um, only did the barrel and the piston. Didn't put a new head on. I mean, there's thousands of people out there. People do 186cc kits or whatever, and I just wanted something somewhat reliable. Head gasket all good? Yep. Designed to be only used once, which we can compare with the new one. It's got a little crush washer system. That once it's torqued down. That's it? That's it. Yeah, cool. One thing you have to watch when you do this is that the piston doesn't drop when you pull the heat off. Oh. 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 That's surprising. It's been um, seized before or run without any oil. I reckon that's from before I got it. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh no. I was not expecting to see that. No, neither was I. You might have to pull that camera off and get a good look at that. Yeah, it's had a, it's had a seize. It's had a seize or it's been hot and picked up. Oh wow. Where's the light in here? Yeah. It's up there. And you might be able to just see in there. You can see where it's picked up on the barrel. Holy god, that's not like just a little score. It's freaking divots. Yeah, and it's the whole way up the barrel. I don't know if it's any difference to anyone, but this is actually on the top side okay. of the barrel and yeah. piston. So yeah. I don't know if there's uh, possibly uh, less oiling on that side due to the nature of the way the engine sits. Um, I have ridden this bike at wide open throttle for, you know, in a, in a, in a solid 12 hour days of on and off the bikes, it's probably been wide open for like genuinely five to six hours. Yeah. Um, and I'll do that for like three days in a row. And I would notice that on like kind of the end of the second day, you'd start to get a bit of clutch slip. Um, and that would kind of be the only issue. I never ever noticed a lack in power. Like I was still daily commuting this recently. I haven't stopped riding it because I thought it was bad. No, there was no signs of this engine running poorly. Nor That's any crazy. signs of blow by. Dude. Dude, bro. So um, the other thing that's probably interesting to preface this with is that I, um, I'll take this camera off and show you guys. When I got this, um, I made Thomas go and check it out. And when he checked it out, the oil level was really low. Look at that, that's absolutely wild. And um, I'll see if I can get there. If you just hold it now down here-ish and yeah, see I can get that. You can see that scraping all the way down there. That's wild. Look at that screen if you lean over. It's getting it well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so. And you can feel that quite harshly with your fingernails. So yeah, not good. It's not good. Um, but. So Thomas went and checked this bike out for me and he did say to me, hey, it sounds like it's got nails in it. And um, I don't know if they're meant to be that loud. It might not have actually seized before. It might have just picked up on its way or it's just got hot and started to get to that point. And it's just picked up. I let off the throttle at the right time. 
Kaz has been like, you need to get this dynoed when we get it done. I was like, oh, I've got a reflash DCU, it'll be sweet. This has made me decide more than anything else that I need to get a dyno done on this thing and actually make sure it's safe at all throttle levels. Yep. There we go. I would have lost that inside the engine. <laughs> So just to recap, in case you weren't sure what's just happened, we've taken the barrel off, we've taken the head off, and we've discovered that this piston has been mightily chooched, uh, grabbed on both sides, and uh, this is weird because it ran really well before this happened. So um, that's where we're at. We'll plug this and then we'll make a plan of what we're going to do next. Sweet. All right, well that's the uh, part one of this video. Uh, often inspected. I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm going to stop this video now um, because uh, I've, it's going to take ages to pick this gasket off and um, you can watch part two when we put everything back together instead of one massive long video. Wow, well, it's probably not going to take that much longer. No, it's just easier for me to edit. I'm being selfish. <laughs> <laughs>